Hey everyone, in this short video, I will talk about the response compression capabilities of an ASP.NET Core web application. So ASP.NET Core provides you the feature for compressing the responses before sending them to the client. So we can use it as a middleware for um, compressing the response of different kinds of um, requests which have been made from the client browser or from anywhere else. So the features of this response compression middleware are these ones and what simply happens is we configure the middleware in the startup.cs file of our asp.net core application and then that middleware basically take cares of you know compressing the response before sending it from where it has been called and it supports different kinds of compression methods like gzip deflate broadly etc and we can also create our own custom response compression mechanisms or algorithms and we can use it with this middleware if um, you want to or if you have any specific requirements to use a custom um, you know compression algorithm then you can do that now there could be um, questions that why we should use the response compression from asp.net core when we can easily do it from the server the reason could be that um, if the server compression is disabled then we can use the response compression from the asp.net core application itself it is not going to be very efficient obviously as compared to the server but when the server one is disabled then uh, the only option that we have is to compress the responses from the application itself or the other reason could be when we need to compress additional media types or mime types which are not um, you know really supported as a default ones when the response is compressed from the server the third reason could be when we want to use a custom response compression algorithm like i just talked about and the fourth reason could be when we are not really concerned about different kinds of security exploits which are related to compressing the response and then sending it to the client like um, for example breach type of attacks all right so now i will show you a very simple code example about how to use the response compression middleware in your ASP.NET Core application but before that I have a request to make if at any point of watching this video you think that you like the video and it is helpful for you then please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and also like the video and it will be a great help and encouragement for me to keep creating new videos on a regular basis for you guys. So over here there is Visual Studio 2017 and I'm going to create a new project and let's just name it rc for response compression let's just keep it short press ok and then we need to select the or I, i'm just going to select the api um, project for this example the first thing which i will do is i will go into the values controller class and then i will change the type of the response or the data which is being returned and i will simply paste a very long string so that we can um, test the difference between the size of the response which has been received in the browser when the response compression is enabled versus when it is not enabled and then after this we need to add the um, response compression as a service I'm not going to provide any kind of arguments and um, when we do that then gzip will be used as a default response compression provider and then in the configuration method we need to um, you know what I'm just going to zoom it in so that you guys can see it properly now in the configure method I will call the function or method app dot use response compression and that's pretty much it the next thing which I will do is I will run this application on IIS Express so let's just do that now I'm going to open up the terminal for the network and then let's refresh this page again to record the network traffic. You can see that the total amount of data which has been transferred is 1.3 KB when we have um, used the response compression middleware in our ASP.NET application. Now let's see what will happen when we disable this response compression and to do that I'm just going to comment out these two lines and then build the code again let's run the application again and we need to again record the network traffic now this time you can see that the 
total amount of data which has been transferred or downloaded is 2.1 KB which is uh, more than the last time when we are not using the response compression middleware so you can see that how this response compression middleware is pretty useful we can also provide the type of the compression which we want to use for example if you want to explicitly say that you want to use the gzip compression then you can um, provide the name of that provider i guess i need to add a using statement over here and by doing this the middleware will always use this provider whenever it will compress the responses and there is actually a website which details the different kinds of options which you can use with this middleware so for example you can use um, different compression algorithms like gzip and deflate broadly for br etc so yep that's how you do it and i guess i need to show you one more thing so what happens is whenever chrome makes a request then it provides the type of the response compression algorithms it can work with in the accept encoding header so um, whenever you are making your own requests then you need to add this accept encoding header detailing the types or the names of the compression algorithms which you want to use and the server will simply read this value of this header and then it will use the appropriate compression algorithm for example chrome is sending gzip and deflate and broadly as default so yep that's it all right so that's pretty much it for this video guys and i hope that you will like and understand this video and if you have any questions then don't be shy to use the comments area and i will be sure to reply to all of your questions and suggestions till we meet in the next video have a great day